Hello everyone, my name is Jason and in this video I'm going to show you how to convert a continuous variable into an ordinal variable. Or essentially what I'm going to do is I'm going to take uh, a con a data on a continuous scale and we're going to put it into uh, groups. Okay, so we're going to we're going to basically be making a grouped frequency distribution. And this is the custom custom method. And that's because I have four groups here that I want uh, for whatever research purposes. Uh, I want these intervals particularly. Okay, so we're going to tell SPSS exactly what intervals we want. And that's the, the custom uh, method. So let's go to our SPSS window. And here we have my data editor window in my variable view. And here's my variable age. Now I want to transform age, so I'm going to hit transform and I'm going to go to visual binning. And now I'm going to drag age into the variables to bin box and I'm going to hit continue. And now you can see the current variable age and then you see the binned variable. So this is the variable that we're going to create. The binned variable is going to be our new variable. So I'm just going to call it age custom. Okay, and you can see here our minimum value for our variable age is 18 and the maximum value is 88. And you can see a frequency distribution of the variable age, which might help you in determining your, your custom intervals. Now down here is where we're actually going to create our custom intervals. And each of these rows represents uh, a group. Okay, and now there's only two rows here, but there will uh, it will populate more here as we go down the list. And what this column is, value, uh, the number that you put in here is going to be the upper limit of, of that group. So here's group number one. What do you want the upper limit of group number one to be? Right? And now if you remember, I want 18 to 28. So the upper limit is going to be 28. So I'm just going to put 28 in there. And then you can see the line that just appeared. Right, that's our first cutoff point. So it's going to take all the, the all the values basically below 28 up until 28 will be included in group number one. Now in our list we have uh, the next upper limit for group two is 38, and then the upper limit for group three is 48, and then the upper limit for the fourth group is is going to be 49 and above. Okay, 49 and above. So that way we're including all of our all of our possible values. Now you can see here this little section right here it says upper endpoints included or excluded and included has the little less than or equal to sign whereas excluded just doesn't have the equal to sign. So in group one, do you want to include or exclude 28? And that's important because if you wanted to exclude 28, then essentially you'd be looking at uh, values from 18 to 27, right? But if you wanted to include 28, then you would be looking at values 18 to 28. And I've chosen to include that value. So once you decide all this, once you've put down your, your upper limits or upper endpoints for each group, and once you decide whether you want to include or exclude that upper uh, endpoint value from the actual group, then you can hit make labels. So I choose make labels and you can see it, it populates that label column and now you can see exactly what's included within each group. So for example, group three is 39 to 48, right? And it includes, it includes 48 as you can see there. And also finally high right is 49 and above finally you can also see all of our cut points on the graph up here which helps for you know any, any kind of visual uh, it's a good visual aid at least and that's that's we're good to go now I'm just gonna hit ok binning will create one new variable ok and now you can here's the syntax for what we've just done I'm just going to open up our, our, our variable window again and important thing to do is just to do a quick sort of a descriptive analysis of our new variable just to see what's going on here. <coughs> uh, I want to have a, uh, a histogram. Oh, no, we'll do a bar chart. 
So here you can see the number of uh, participants in each of these groups uh, that we've created. And here is our, our bar chart for that. Now, you know, looking at this, again, this is a bar chart, right? It's not a histogram. So we're not looking at whether it's skewed or, or whatever because these intervals are not of, of equal interval width. So, so we can't really make that kind of a, a judgment just based on looking at this graph. So if you have any questions, please feel free to message me. If not, stay tuned for my next video in this video series. Cheers.